means that are structured and controlled in terms of some of the rules that apply. So this was supposed to be more of a free for all, if I use that language, and uh, in honor of minister. Minister was my boss. I am very proud to have met her. Wow. Uh, I think most of you may not quite understand how I was relating to minister, but I had more laughter when I was with minister. Uh, we would work, push each other, she would push, and I would then say, oh, minister, please, can we do this tomorrow? Um, negotiate my way through her. And uh, there were a few things that I liked specifically about her. Beyond her beauty, I loved her intellect. She, when I'm looking for words, uh, when we discuss uh, in a briefing or when we are preparing for something, she would have a very interesting way of presenting and putting across what she would want uh, us to do, whether it's in a policy, whether it's legislation, whether it's a, in a budget speech, uh, and so on and so on. And she knew all of us. She understood our style. She said, DG, did you read this? I said, mm, Minister, I had to process it because you wanted it yesterday. I can see you did not read. <laughs> and uh, that was Minister. Uh, when she arrived uh, as minister in our portfolio in 2010, uh, I was already appointed as a director general uh, from the previous administration. Uh, some people were wishing me good luck. I was not sure what they meant. And uh, uh, I had some experience with minister when she was still in Northwest, by the way because uh, I was in the sector already um, through her when she was the premier as well as when, was, uh, when she was MEC, uh, because there were those intergovernmental forums, MinMEX, and uh, when the min former minister, Van Skalkvig, was appointed as minister of environment and tourism, there were still outstanding matters related to some of the world heritage sites in Northwest. Uh, that were linking to Free State, and uh, she had a meeting with this minister and the new minister. I think she was not a uh, minister, Van Skalpik, was not even a year in the portfolio, a few months. She arrived. And when she arrived, it was like it's already late. We were waiting outside, and uh, Minister Van Skalpik was inside the boardroom. She said, Where we? We're going straight there. Where is the door? Where is the door? Do we go in here? So she did not even wait. Went in and I was wondering what would happen. But uh, we have to start uh, with the meeting. So as clear as she was, never wanting to be bullied, uh, very clear as a woman, uh, she made, she presented a case about the Freire Fort Dome, why it must be managed by the province, not national, even if it was going to be a World Heritage Site. And that was the taste that I had of her with Alf Will's ponytail at the time. So it was quite interesting then to now anticipate how I'm going to work with this woman. Uh, so we then had this first meeting. Uh, but let me first mention one thing. Directors generals in the public service are an endangered species. Uh, if you check the records, uh, the DPME right now in its m and &E report is indicated, I think, last year that the average stay of a DG in a department is about two and a half or two years, six months average. Huh? It is a tough job. And it's not just tough, it's tough because of relationships. Uh, there is this big word that's used that is referred to as 
a political administrative interface. And I was not sure how I'm going to manage this interface with Minister, but uh, I, th I thought I'm going to take my chance, and I saw that she wanted to take a chance also with me. So I had some fears, um, and if the first meeting is anything to go by, as uh, Dora mentioned, but I also had noted it when I was thinking about what I'm, where do I start, uh, when I even think about how I related uh, with May Edna. We had an appointment on this day after those normal formal arrangements at the presidential guest house. Uh, we had an appointment with her in Pretoria. Uh, then we were informed that I was having a meeting with the DDGs. I had a 3D meeting. Um, the department has got different categories of meetings. 3D is a DG with the DDGs. 4D is with the chief directors, DDGs and the DG. 5D with director. So we have those Ds and I found it there myself so I cannot uh, account for it. So Minister, then we then get informed she's still meeting water affairs. Then we were wondering, okay. Uh, then the day ended. We got the message to us in the afternoon, Dora, when I was recalling. Ministries uh, or my colleague that I was interacting with from social development said, uh, we are informed that you will meet the minister in Cape Town in the evening. There we were flying. We took the flight, she said 8 p.m. So we flew to, down to Cape Town to meet her at the residence with our thick files. I was with Dora and Joanne. Reason being one of the files, it's more the mundane stuff about handover, um, uh, one about the structure of the organization, delegations, financial management and all of that, and then some of the strategic issues that need immediate attention of a minister. Um, and one of those which were immediate was that there was going to be one of these climate change meetings and she needed to make a decision whether she's going to attend the basic meeting or not. Hence, I went with uh, Joanne so that we fully brief her. Now I was wondering from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock, tomorrow is cabinet. We were also going to brief her on cabinet, but then I assumed she's going to read the cabinet file. Now we start and then she starts saying, DG, let's hurry up, let's hurry up. Uh, we're still going to go through the cabinet file. Ah, <laughs> in my head. Then, and we are still going to discuss the climate. We're still going to discuss this. Wow. And uh, the rest is history. But in that discussion, she crystallized three things. At, if my collection, my recollection, uh, is 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 accurate. One, it was on on the biodiversity area, the World Heritage issues of Friday. Uh, she wanted us, we were struggling with the finalization of the regulations um, and therefore that was also delaying the development of a management plan for the Freddy Ford Dome. So she picked up that issue and it was more of a stakeholder management issue. And she said immediately she's going to want a meeting. Let's get into the details. Let the whole team come so that we have a discussion on that matter is in making sure that we do comply with UNESCO requirements. Secondly, she wanted to have a discussion about a matter that related uh, to, it was climate, it was biodiversity, then in oceans, we were still busy with the allocations for boat-based whale watching and shark cage diving. That's how the panel of uh, uh, the uh, special advisor, uh, May uh, Bridget Mabanja was established. So on those matters, we went back and we had to then uh, brief her. So there was a meeting then the next day. Said so next day, when we left in the morning, we will have to meet. But uh, without going into further details about some of the stories that I wanted to share, but um, to me, Minister was a breath, 
a breath of fresh air. And in that she valued stability. She did not come and make changes to the department, right? Uh, like it happens when there is a change. She looked and she applied her mind, she tried to understand, and then she said, these are the things I want change. And we then worked on a process of amending or making changes in those respective areas. Secondly, as a mother, a few times, as I said, she had an option not to give me another contract. When she came, I had a three-year contract. She gave me a five-year contract, she gave me a second one. I have two five-year contracts that I was uh, um, uh, given by Minister Mulewa. And with this second one particularly, because now I'm two years into it, uh, we had a long discussion because I was saying, Minister, I am tired of this job, this type of job. I hear people wanting to have DGs being permanent. I wish them luck. I honestly think even if you have the nicest DG and nicest minister, you have to do it and, and move on. So with our discussions, I had at least two opportunities where I could leave the department. And when I discussed those with her, wow, <laughs> she, she really dissected what was I thinking, what could happen, and just the nature of those institutions, transformation-wise, and so on. And I really gave it a lot of thought. And she proceeded to, and she called HR to work on a submission for my a, a, another five-year contract so that she takes it to cabinet whilst I was deciding. And looking back, because I wanted to retire at 50, now I'm 52. Uh, looking back, I say thank you to her, actually, uh, because I could have rushed, and then our final agreement on this five-year contract was that I would be here then for three years until the end of this term. Then with the two years, she can decide, at least she can appoint a new DG, God allowing that she comes back to the department because we always prayed that she comes back as a minister so that we keep the stability. Um, and I then said to her, well, my other focus, I want to go and farm in my rural province back in the Eastern Cape. And we had a lot to share about farming and she said, well, are you serious? I said, I am very serious. I'm a rural woman and so we shared aspects of what we understand about life in rural areas. We also, even in terms of traditional leaders, by the way, not because I see a, a Nkosi particular here, a minister loved Khosh or Khosh. She believed in the role of Abu Khosh. I believe in it myself, and, a, and I think it's a debate for other forums, but in general, uh, we had such discussions. We had private discussions when I have my trouble with my husband and other things when she has her own troubles. Um, we were open to each other. There was time for just that sisterly discussion. I never felt that she's a minister that does not want to. She likes empowering women, girl children. It, even now, before she left for China, she was telling me about this other research uh, student that she was giving pocket money to. That DG, we, you must look, that is a bright girl. And she was supposed to send me the CV of the bright girl and, um, and I have not quite yet managed to get it uh, because she did not come back uh, from China, or at least when she got back, uh, we did not get time to continue uh, to even explore that opportunity. Just a few of the things that I th think are outstanding from ourselves. As a woman of a questioning mind, uh, she was a leader that always stood for justice. Uh, she was passionate about each and every aspect of the area of 
environment. Each of the branches, she knows its work back and forth, including administration, finance. I'm a DG that I have been sharing this with other DGs because we have the powers that we, we, we enjoy from the PFMA as DGs. The ministers have their original powers more in the public service administration regulations or legislation. In the department, we've always had a practice. We pre I prepare financial delegations with HR delegations. We sit down with minister and we discuss uh, what she wants to delegate, what she does not want to delegate, what I delegate in terms of financial delegations and what I, I should not uh, delegate. So in my view, uh, she is a real model minister that you could get. And if I just run quickly through a few of the areas already on oceans and coast, I know that it was already mentioned, the her work that she led on the oceans economy. To me, it was about how she used that oceans economy as a mechanism to create a wealth of public understanding about South Africa's oceans. Marine Week, two years ago, she said it must be in, we must go and have the whole simulation lab in Libobo and Gauteng. Move the simulation to Libobo, how much, however much it costed. Because she was saying, scientists, we need scientists from all the provinces of South Africa to have an interest in marine science in uh, uh, various other studies, including um, uh, the weather, what is your climate, climate, climate science, and so on and so on. So I think she, or her intellect, managed to help her connect all the time what is strategic, what is linked to each other, because as human beings, when I study biology, because she used to stand in forums and say, don't look at that small DG. She is a scientist. And I said, Minister, you really say I'm a scientist. She is a scientist in biology that I learned, biochemistry or even physiology. I never saw the connections, but I see them now that I work in this department. Social science is linked to environmental um, education. Everything, ocean, you cannot talk about an ocean and not talk about the life in the ocean and the life of humans and animals that uh, benefits from the oceans. So that is the beauty of her mind and the way uh, she was uh, gifted in thinking and in connecting the issues. She loved the oceans, she loved the S.A. Akalas as a vessel you would ask why she was so in fond of it. She named it herself as a Miriam Akeba because she wanted to dedicate it because she said, you know, most other people are complaining about Zumnanmi's being named after women, Katharina, whatever. Uh, but most vessels are also, yeah. So she said, well, it should be a woman. And let's think about a woman. And she went through that process, and the Oceans team at the time did not appreciate why she wanted the Akalas to be named a, a, a Miriam Makeba. She wanted that vessel to be used as an instrument to understand the Indian Ocean, to make sure that we have knowledge that can help us both in protecting ourselves from either certain changes in the ocean over time, which may have devastating effects. At the same time, she also wanted us to use that as an instrument for economic uh, empowerment. And really, in, her, in terms of her last official engagement during this visit to China, the first leg of it was very much uh, about the work of ocean's economy, having been supported by Andre She, who he really liked so much, and, and the colleagues that were with her, Gail and the team. Over and above that, Judy, I just want to mention that you have to make sure that that research and our contribution uh, to the RIM Association 
a program is achieved because this is something that she wanted. So it is some, your homework and my homework for us to really make sure uh, we take forward. She was acknowledged through the award, uh, through the WWF gift of the Earth Award, which is very much important and already Moni Duplessis has spoken about it. She liked Shoni, Shoni your homework uh, from what I recall uh, in the previous discussions with Minister. In the area of bioprospecting, when we implement the benefit and access regulations, her question and her preoccupation was, how do we not shortchange communities? How do we give them tools that will enable them to negotiate beneficial agreements with pharmaceutical companies or even biotraders? in their use of their traditional knowledge of plants, whether they're medicinal plants or other plants. So that is a homework that we have not pursued further. We have to make sure that we carry that forward. And Fundi was mentioning that when Minister said she needed counseling, Fundi, I understood that SMS because you were not, you were saying you are unable to sleep. So because of your response, is what triggered her to say you need counseling. Because I also responded at, after that 3 a.m., but she did not say I need counseling. <laughs> <laughs> and, Guy, and Guy Preston, he, Minister always wished that Guy must go and set up more eco furniture factories to be run by women in villages. We were talking, uh, there, were, there, were, there were villages we were talking about their names. And COO uh, was a witness uh, to one of the meetings that I had with Minister, wherein the value added industries, which are based on utilization of wood, which is the biomass that arise from clearing invasive species from our landscapes, that we should really make sure that we use that as a tool for empowerment. Because again, participation of women and previously disadvantaged individuals was a preoccupation that she had for some time. Mark in chemicals and waste, my understanding again, Minister believed heartily in beneficiation of waste products to empower the youth and young girls. She wanted that we definitely make sure that we move even beyond the tires. We look at all the other um, waste streams, including the fact that she was rushing us in the last two months, working on a concept which she worked on herself in terms of making South Africa clean, making South Africa beautiful. We cannot fail her legacy. Dr. Zakane Ngomane, who is the new DDG in the climate team must make sure that South Africa represents us as a sector with distinction at this coming conference of parties, including the biodiversity conference of parties for, uh, for Shoni and, and the team. Ish, does Isham, uh, the work of the Environmental Management Inspectorate Minister appreciated and I believe that she, want, she would like that, that it should continue, especially if it can help to crack the illegal killing of rhinos. Remember her wish in terms of how to cooperate between yourselves and the waste branch and the other branches in terms of facilitated compliance, which in my understanding, after long discussions with her, meant proactive education to help all of the people that come into the waste area, especially in the industry, because that's an industry that has limited transformation. You have to help them to understand the environmental legislation before you crack the whip. That is my understanding of her wish. Dimpo, uh, already there was a declaration here made by Paul uh, that in terms of the ministerial handbook, we are above <laughs> the numbers. And you know, all of us, minister did not like to be told, you cannot do this. Mm -hmm. 
she, that is, she, you would have to get out of that door. Once you start saying, out, you cannot, you cannot say, it cannot be done. You have to say, Minister, we can do it in this way. Minister, we can do it in this way. Or let's explore this. Maybe we might be in trouble, but you have to put all your reasoning of why you will be in trouble. So this notion of the size of ministries, she does not like it. She, at least she has communicated in various platforms. When we met with the Public Service Commission, she said, firstly, I don't like it. It's, it is not, it's illogical. Secondly, uh, uh, this thing of not making people permanent when they work in ministries is also not good. So she stood for justice and whatever it meant, and other people will say, can, can, can say whatever they want to say. So that declaration is already made, uh, Paul, and uh, I've already declared it. I went to the presidency yesterday and I presented the structure and everybody, so that is known, and the Minister of Public Service uh, Andre was telling me that actually she had more time with the Minister of Public Service when they were in China because she wanted a bilateral many times before they travel. So maybe she has been also given a message in that respect. So we'll have to manage it. Uh, lastly, Alf, I mean, Minister and yourself come a long way. And, uh, and certainly you may have your, you, you probably have your own tribute. Let me not dwell into that. But minister knew who, what strengths each, each one of the team has. And she would push you to your limits because she knows you can do it. And, and, and with Dimpo, she still liked you, but when she doesn't like something, we are quarter. Uh, yeah. Lastly, uh, at the prayer services at home, there was a sharing of the word about when death strikes, uh, like an earthquake, what do you do? That's, and I, I was asking myself, what do we do? And um, I think we have a lot of work to continue to present and preserve the legacy of Minister Mulewa. Uh, I shall always treasure the time I worked with her and the opportunity I got. Um, it is an experience that I will never, never, never lose and until myself uh, I get taken by the Almighty. So we'll have to learn to adjust and accept uh, and work through even our emotions, and at this point in time, we have to manage ourselves much better so that we avoid uh, uh, causing each other stress. And to the family, we love Minister Mlewa. We love her. And uh, we think that she is gone, but she can never be more than a thought away for as long as her memory lives with us in our hearts. So I would like to hand over to my colleagues if they, for those that way, had offered themselves. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to the family, Deputy Minister, Comrade Bridget, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Guy Preston. I'm the DDG for Environmental Programs. I think for many of the speakers, for many of the speakers, there's a, there's, a, there's a similarity in the experiences that we've had. And I just want to, to talk on two of the aspects that really did impress me about Minister Malawa. The, the first is her intellect. She really had an extraordinary grasp of such a wide range of subjects and was so quick to understand these, these uh, subjects and get to the, the real gist of what it is that needs to be addressed in our work. And that really shone through in so much of, of the work that I've been a privilege, privileged to be part of uh, in the department. Uh, and I think the second thing that I would highlight is her warmth. 
And the pictures that are being shown here, there's one of her throwing her head back uh, at, the, at the ship with Stian Kotze. Um, and that wonderful smile that she has always permeated. So no matter what you did that was wrong, and there were many of those, uh, it was always that, that, that warmth and that, that sense of humor that for me came through in so much of the interactions with, uh, with our minister. I think uh, across the programs that we're running, uh, when I talk here, I'm, I hope I'm talking on behalf of not just the 500 odd people in our branch, uh, but in fact the hundreds of thousands of people who have worked through our programs, the 14 programs that we run, uh, led by Minister Molewa. Uh, and she paid particular attention to, to detail and she had, as many others have said, this phenomenal memory in fact, you got hit by both sides because our DG also has this extraordinary memory. And uh, so you couldn't get away with uh, not paying attention to the, the aspects. And she, she would pick up on things. And, and I remember a, a case of an infrastructure project where I, I tried to convince her that it was all in hand. Uh, and she persisted. And then when we went and looked at it, uh, indeed, she was right and we were wrong. Uh, and, and we had to then uh, fix that. But she persisted in terms of wanting to know that we had done the corrections that were necessary. And, and that kind of attention to detail, uh, that memory where she wouldn't forget, the DG mentioned the eco-coffins. Uh, we, hadn't, we haven't dealt with the eco-coffins in the way that she wanted. She wanted us to use them as a way of empowering women, of empowering the Stockfells uh, to get these to, to uh, reduce the cost of bereavement for the poor. Uh, and we will still do that, Minister Molewa. Uh, we will still honor that, that commitment uh, that we made to you. And I think there are many other examples of things that we want to do. Dr. Uh, Mornay Duplessis talked about the uh, Prince Edward Islands. And one of the things that we're looking to do beyond that is to eradicate the mice, which are causing such extraordinary damage to the seabirds of, of the islands. And her comment to me, one of the last times I saw her, in fact, was, do it. Don't wait, do it. And we all do these things uh, uh, in honor of, of this uh, giant of a minister that it's been a privilege uh, to serve. Uh, over the past, in my case, uh, seven years. So to the minister, uh, to the family, I beg your pardon. Uh, my deepest sympathies, I, I always wondered at how hard the minister pushed herself uh, to points of exhaustion in, in many cases. Uh, it's a great loss and, and my thoughts are with you uh, and indeed all of my colleagues and comrades uh, on her loss, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, DG, Deputy Minister, and uh, all the dignitaries that are here. Um, I'm one of the youngest in the team, and uh, she used to call me small fundi <laughs> for whatever reason. It's only recently that she changed and she would call me DDG Shoni. I was so surprised. Um, then I asked myself, why was she calling me small fundi from the beginning? I think I learned that she was trying to say, you must learn from those who walked before you and try and do better, uh, referring to my former colleague. Um, we worked with Minister very well. We'll cherish forever the moments that we've had with her. The other time, I decided not to joined the team because I was very tired when they were going to Colombia and the U.S. Not, to, not knowing that I will be part of the team at their time zone while being here in South Africa. I remember very well I was called around 10 o'clock we were to rewrite the speech from the beginning. Then she gave a long list via SMS of how the speech should look like. 
And then I started writing, the Wi-Fi was gone at home, so I drove to where the signal was, at the garage somewhere. I worked up until one o'clock, and it was only my car there, and they were looking at this car, what's going on in here? Because I couldn't give an excuse. I sent the first draft, she commented, I sent the second draft, and then I told my wife that I should have gone to Colombia. <laughs> because I was in Colombia while here in South Africa. I, we had all those night vigils. DG, we did so many of them. You knew that you will meet one o'clock. If you leave before after 12 mid morning, you were very lucky. And you would be going to the next day for, for, the, for, the, for the rhino statements. The other time, I even thought, you know, I drove, I think it was around two or so, just to go and change and come back because we were to come back and be there on time. So there were moments with her. And for us, she taught us that biodiversity is not just what we think. It goes beyond. And we need to know that beyond. There's something that is behind that. Um, I titled what I'm talking to here as this minister. Um, because she was not a minister. She was the minister. You know when you're talking about the minister of environmental affairs, not just a minister. There are ministers and there are also ministers. You know what I'm talking about. But this one was the minister. Um, the affirmation of women was very clear. When it comes to that, there's no protocol. Uh, colleagues were telling me and she would talk to them and say, walk tall, walk straight, walk feel and and she will encourage and we, we 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 knew that part very very well the other time i asked her why do you always put all these many comments on the submissions and you want to talk to them she said every submission is like a contract and it's got legal implications i i, I didn't know i thought maybe documents that have legal con implications are contracts, but she said every submission and every line has implications. Therefore, you need to, to talk to this very well. Um, the political economy, this was a pet pro subject. And the other time we went there, normally at home you will sit around that table and signing things. This time she said, we're sitting by the couches there. We are going to talk about political economy. It was a very long lecture about political economy. You must know what is behind what you see, the North and the South dynamics and many other things. Uh, and she would demand that when we deal with bioprospecting issues, be very clear who benefits. Those, that's the first question. When you say this person is part of this, um, what about shareholding? We learned economics, we learned accounting, we learned you would not be with her and not know all these things. Towards the end of her life, um, sometimes we don't read the signs. I think, Mr. Mukhakane, you are right. Um, we went to talk to permits that were not being signed by her. Each one had a reason why. And there were so many. So when we arrived, they were like this. So I brought the whole team. This time around, I thought maybe the problem was me. So I brought the whole team and we sat there because we needed to talk to this. That time, for the record, she signed 36 of them. When we come, came out, I said, wow, this has never happened. And she was asking, are there others? Uh, it was us who said, these other ones are not ready. But each one she knew the story, and she would tell you, the last time you spoke about this, this is what you said. And she was very, very clear on, on, on each one of them. The last part here, when we went to have the conference in Toyando, there were four things that we were doing in four days. Maybe some people did not realize. We had the launch of the projects at Mansila. We had a, a ministerial visit which she led to Botanical Garden. We had the People and Parks Conference that was running. We had the presidential launch of the Biodiversity Economy uh, uh, Operation Pakisa. In four days, all these things were happening and she was part of them and giving the, the leadership. And, 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 and. So I said to 
myself that she was technical, strategic, scientific, technical. I didn't know how to define her. Adaptive, hard, but yet soft, forceful, yet understanding, a fighter, yet a peacemaker, confrontational, yet diplomatic, loving and lovable at the same time, complex and yet ordinary. Few ministers will bring mining and biodiversity into one room, and she managed to do that. Uh, the protected area strategy, she managed to do that. Bringing all, I've got a friend in Defense Force, General Mawela was here, and many other, uh, Fundi, you know all these generals, and people in police and whatever, because she said, this is all of us together. When we went to Mukhanedi's uh, uh, funeral, we gave her a speech and she looked at it, she said, this thing is not complete. We said, why? She said, uh, they have a, I need a verse, <laughs> put, a, put a verse. So I forgot and we were looking for the Bible and, and she said, I need a verse. <laughs> so we had to put a verse in there. Uh, but before I read one other verse that we, we gave it to her, we gave to her, uh, there's this poet who wrote this part here and he described grief as a medicine. And he said, grief cleanses the anguish from the souls. It sets us back up in the path of life so we can dance. This must bring some healing uh, to all of us, but we know it will take a lot of time. Saturday, the other day, we called her. She was coming in for the youth, and she said she was tired and committed, but we asked her that, these are the youth that you have invited from all over the world. And then she said, okay, I'm coming, reluctantly so. And she was complaining about it. When she arrived, we had the event. You saw the pictures when she was dancing. She said that was the best therapy. And those youth from all over the world did send a message. The verse now I conclude. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, to the family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And that peace that we are talking about is peace beyond human understanding. I say, God is all in all for all. Thank you very much. You. Greetings to, to everybody and uh, on behalf of the staff of the branch of chemicals and waste management, we want to extend our warmest condolences to the immediate family and indeed to the family of the department and the sector. Um, this is indeed a great loss uh, for us. We've lost a giant, a stalwart, a champion for the rights of the poor, the downtrodden, a great mentor, great leader, um, and now a legend. Um, I loved her very much, and I'm sure many of you have, and uh, she had made a very indelible impact on my life um, and the lives of many. Uh, uh, untimely loss has indeed left behind a great vacuum. And I think for great people, the greater the people, the greater the vacuum. Um, we have many fond and loving memories of, of, of uh, Minister Molewa. Uh, much has been spoken about the late nights working on public holidays. We had to cancel holidays sometimes. Tell the wife, sorry, we're not going now. I'm busy <laughs> with the minister. And um, that was a lot of learning for me. And for the sector, she made great strides in the chemicals and waste sector. She really took it to another level. Uh, what a sector that was once in the background, if I can say that, she really brought it to the foreground and made it stand on the international global uh, agenda. There's many attributes to, to uh, emulate from Minister, and I'm just gonna list them very quickly. She was dedicated, devoted, passionate, determined, persevering, caring, sharing, serving. She was tireless, selfless, dynamic, intelligent, coherent, wise, astute, loving, kind, generous, skillful, industrious, meticulous, impeccable, eloquent, concise, precise, independent, thought leader on her own, very confident, dignified, courageous, inspiring, patriotic, energetic, and one thing that stood out for me was that she never gave up. There was an incident, uh, I was stranded somewhere, I think between Taiwan and Japan uh, a few years ago. 
and the national carrier and I think the international carrier said, there's nothing they can do for me. The travel agent also says, sorry, there's nothing you, they can do for me, you're on your own. Somehow minister had found out about this because I was gonna meet her on the other side. She says, and I said, well, I'll have to try and make ways to get back home now. She says, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you just stay there. I'm gonna call you back. And half an hour, she called back those new flights, redirected me, got me on the other side, got to go see her smiling, and she says, there's nothing that's impossible. And that for me really struck, uh, it's a big highlight for me. Um, and she never gave up on many things. No was not in her voc vocabulary. Uh, she really supported us through the various programs in the sector, the, the many coros, the conferences, the budget speeches, working till late at night, early mornings. Uh, but for me, the other big thing that stood out was a commitment and a conviction about the plight of the poor. Uh, was indeed foremost in her heart. She was truly moved with compassion when she saw the waste pickers plying the trade on the streets and the landfill sites. And in fact, one of the budget speeches, we had to really write a story of a waste picker because she was really convicted about that and said we have to change the plight of these waste pickers. Um, at an international level, um, we really recognize the leadership and indeed the rest of the world has been spoken about. Uh, she led many agreements uh, in the world in, this, in the space of chemicals and waste management, particularly in August, uh, October 2013. She led and spearheaded South Africa's signing of the Minamata Convention for the protection of the world from, from mercury. Uh, in October 2016, the, in Kigali, Rwanda, uh, when there was a, a decade-long deadlock and a stalemate uh, in terms of the Montreal Protocol, Minister played a very, very important, prominent role in unlocking and unblocking that particular agreement. And today it has been signed and universally adopted. She really put the issues of waste, the plastic, pollution, marine litter uh, uh, on the global agenda. She had a lot of respect of being an intellectual, really a force to be reckoned with in, in terms of uh, negotiation ability. And she was nominated many times to chair, to lead, facilitate several international uh, sessions and plenaries uh, in many of the United Nations conventions. She was often called upon by ministerial colleagues from other countries. Um, uh, to, to, to get involved in some of the uh, sessions that built up to these agreements. And in many respects, uh, I would call her, call her the, the, the bridge between the global south and the global north. She was indeed a, a bridge builder. She was about uh, getting win-win solutions. For her it was, let's negotiate, let's facilitate an outcome. She didn't want us, want the court to tell her how to run her business. And so we would miss that a lot. Uh, expertise, uh, influence, ex and exceptional ability also to work behind the scenes in these international negotiations. Uh, she was a thought leader. She uh, established the Africa uh, Circular Economy um, Alliance uh, in 2016. She also was very involved in this concept in the BRICS summits. And uh, much to be said of her, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna skip a lot of things just to say that um, she had a relentless pursuit for justice, for transparency, for equality, for transformation. And she was a champion of the oppressed, the downtrodden, the outcasts. Shwani was saying about including a scripture somewhere and a verse, and I was thinking about John chapter 12, verse uh, number 24. And the Bible says, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it abides alone. But if it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. A grain by itself on the ground actually is meaningless. But when that grain uh, and seed dies, it brings forth much fruit. What we see here today is the fruit of her work. But we're going to see much more in terms of a bigger harvest that can be realized through the seeds that she's sown in each one of us. So I believe that she served with true conviction and many of her convictions she was prepared to die for it. 
And in, indeed she did, in the course of duty, in the line of duty, she gave her life. And I believe that she will continue to speak for many years to come. And she will be forever remembered. We'll salute you, Minister. Long live the spirit of Edna Mollowe. Long live. Good afternoon. Two words come to mind when I think of Edna Mollewa. The one is energy, and the other one is attitude. As far as energy goes, I used to tease her and say, Minister, I want that muti that you're drinking. Please give me some. Because she would just go on and on and on. In terms of attitude, she had a can-do attitude. It doesn't matter what it is, but once she's made her mind up, you need to find a way to do it. Um, she was a very dynamic, intelligent, hard-working minister, and certainly one of the better ministers that I've worked with personally. She had a very sharp eye, but she had an even sharper tongue if you messed up. Um, she'd scrutinize our work, and you know, we lawyers, we think we're very clever people. But she would find mistakes, and she had a view on everything. I think much to our chagrin as the legal department, much to our chagrin as the compliance and enforcement section. But I think what we learned there is that you can't hoodwink her into anything. She knows your areas of work, she knows it intimately, and she brought new ways of thinking into the way that we did things. Um, our responses, our responses to parliament. Um, and we've worked with her on many fronts. From an environmental impact assessment um, perspective, she was always willing to assist sister departments. But I think if a project improved the lives of a fellow South African, um, she would definitely look at ways um, of approving that particular project. She'd supported it, supported it wholeheartedly. She was an ardent supporter of our compliance and enforcement work, as the DG said. She went with us to several international fora and she punted our work big time. She referred to, to us as her environmental police when she was happy with us. Um, I remember fondly we went to the Kruger and we tagged uh, a rhino and ministers sitting on the rhino and assisting the vet to actually push the tag in. Um, and that's, that's the type of person that she was. She'd be able to stand up in an international forum and address an international forum and then go and work with people on the ground. So I, I have those memories of her. As I said, um, our legal team also had extensive engagement with her. And she'd argue about everything. So we, we used to often say to a minister, you've chosen the wrong profession. You should have actually been a lawyer. Um, I think I've got a bald spot here that I can credit to her. And I must admit, we fought bitter battles. Um, she and I often didn't see eye to eye on a few things, but when it came to fighting battles with outsiders, she was always there, she had your back, and she'd protect us. And I think that's, that's the fondest memories that I have of her. I'm not gonna say too much except to say that I pray that the Almighty grant patience to all of us that have been left behind, and also that her soul rest eternally in peace. Thank you very much. Family Molewa, family Meti, Deputy Minister, colleagues, my name is Judy. It has been an extraordinary privilege to serve under the leadership of Minister Molewa in the climate change, part of the climate change team, and now as part of the oceans team, the ocean and coast team. I really have two points. One is to thank the Molewa family, Meti family, for sharing minister with us. Um, I think DG said, we love minister, most extraordinary woman. We spent many, many hours in the negotiating halls and minister was always the last person almost to leave. And the second point, I want to thank you, DG. I want to thank DG because it was through DG that we grew to understand minister and with so much energy that Minister carried through DG and through the Ministry, 
Paul and the ministry, and I think also through Alf, who has worked with, with Minister for so, so many years. You are the ones that um, enabled us to prepare in time. DG, you also encouraged us to have our own relationships with Minister. And in fact, you encouraged our teams to have their relationships with Minister so that Minister was able to access us um, as, as a team. And she knew who she could call on at what time. And that was a really extraordinary privilege for, for all of us. I think, DG, just one last point is to say that Minister was absolutely intent on ensuring that South Africans could get to know and see and understand what is beneath our oceans. Um, and Monet mentioned earlier um, that she recognized the importance of the oceans. She also pushed us and pushed us until we finally, together with Sanby, uh, produced a map, an annotated map, a map of each of the proposed marine protected areas um, with visuals that, in fact, also with videos um, so that you can see what is under the ocean at that particular point um, in the proposed protected areas. And DG, that was launched last night um, and there is a video to go with it. Um, and it was really, it was really testimony to Minister's intention, her, her clear vision as to what was needed at a particular time. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Dimpo Makotoko. In concluding the departmental tributes, I would just like to say, since Saturday, we've had a lot of tributes, even today, that reflected on the contribution of Minister Mulewa in the sector. Allow me therefore not to focus on her work in the sector, but to rather reflect on Mama Edna. Because Mama Edna was like a mother. She was not only a principal to most of us, particularly to me. She was a mother who understood that I still deserved and needed to grow. Need I add, a very techno-savvy mother. She would always tell me that I'm acting as if I was born before technology. A few times she would call me, always in a rush, always in a hurry. Dimpo, itlamu, itlamu, itlamu resebe tsekapil. And I'd say, Minister, I need to rush and get my laptop or something. Why do you need your laptop? Can't you phone me how Dimpo can allow you to do things we need to do? Hmm? Where did you get it? Or is this this RT thing that you are giving us in the department? Those would be her words. She was hard on us, very hard on us, and yet so gentle a mentor, often reminding us that she was a teacher. Albi, never cut it with her. She was a woman of excellence, thorough, and paid attention to detail. A trait that challenged all of us to prove read and be very clear in our submissions. You needed to know that minister was going to ask a question on something that you had not put in that submission and you better have an answer. Otherwise you were gonna have to go back with that submission and rethink it again. That's how thorough she was. But in all these, she was a truly loving and caring mother. DG, to ensure that we didn't burn out, there was a constant supply of BioPlus and rescue. <laughs> ne rescue, yes. She was always on the run, rushing from one engagement to the next and giving selflessly of herself. But I must say, the last engagement I had with her was somehow different. I seemed to be more worried about time than she was. I seemed to be more worried about her engagements than she was. It was at the women uh, leadership dialogue. It was meant to be a breakfast. It was meant to start at half past seven in true minister style. That was not gonna happen. And we had to accept that it wasn't gonna start at half past seven. 
But at least we thought by 12 o'clock latest, we must get her out of this venue if we are late. I remember trying to manage young, vibrant women who had so many questions. And I thought, we've run out of time. And she looked at me and she said, but okay, let them talk. And we ended up staying there the whole day. Dora, this is the event where you and I were reminded that we are not so young anymore. That we are old and we don't walk so straight anymore. But I must add, she indicated that she, on the other hand, was still very young and energetic. In closing, I want to say thank you, Ma, for your leadership, your passion, your energy, and I can't forget the sense of humor, because anyone that knew Minister knew that she had the greatest sense of humor. I thought I should read a little poem that read, says forever in our hearts. Fill not your hearts with pain and sorrow, but remember me in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smiles, I've only gone to rest a while. Although my living causes pain and grief, my going has eased my hurt and given me relief. So dry your eyes and remember me. Not as I am, but as I used to be. I will remember you all and look on you with a smile. Understand in your hearts that I've only gone to rest a while. As long as I have the love of each of you, I can live my life in the hearts of all of you. Rest in power, ma. Uh, greetings, everyone. Meti family, Molewa family, Nono, Basi, my condolences. I'm not going to <coughs> repeat um, what we've all heard, but I just want to share with you. Um, some characteristics and, and qualities that perhaps we haven't focused on of uh, Mama Mulewa. Um, I remember like yesterday, the first day that I met <coughs> Minister Mulewa. It was 1996 in July, just after the National Party had withdrawn from the Government of National Unity minister was redeployed from National Assembly to the province to take over uh, the, the uh, Department of Tourism, Environment and Conservation. At that point in time, I was, I was newly appointed into government at relatively junior level, at a director level. And <clears throat> on her first day, she called all the management team together uh, of the Department of Tourism, Environment and Conservation in order for us to brief her on what the programs of this department were. And in a typical <coughs> Minister Molewa's fashion, every briefing that she received on any particular function, she totally dissected, analyzed, and pointed out how this was not aligned to the RDP and how this was not benefiting women, was not empowering people, was not achieving transformation, and we needed to uh, pull our socks up. At the end of this uh, meeting, this is where all the chief directors were, were briefing and the directors were sitting in the back observing. Um, <clears throat> uh, she just summarized and said, um, Really, we need to have a new vision for this department. This department has got so much potential to contribute uh, to the de development of our people, uh, but we are focused on the wrong things. 
and uh, the head of department, who was an ex Baputswana uh, uh, um, uh, senior senior bureaucrat, uh, then painted the minister into a bit of a corner because he said, "Well, you know, you've got such a lot of things. Uh, could you come tomorrow with a document?" which describes your new vision so that we can, we can uh, plan for that. I went home that night to share with Liz, my wife, what an amazing lady I had just met and seen how absolutely intelligent and bright. And Liz said to me, oh, that's fantastic, and maybe you can now start putting in some of your ideas and, and things that you want to activate and so on and so forth. She said, uh, and where is this new minister? And I said, you see those looking out out of our window, those moving trucks over there? Um, that's where I think she's, she's moving in. Um, and then Liz says, and she's got to produce a vision document by tomorrow morning? Are you crazy? Dush. She kicked me out the house. She said, you better go and help her. So I went there at now about seven o'clock at night and the minister was there organizing, moving furniture, putting Basi to bed, doing all family things. And she said, come in, come in. What, what can I help you with? Um, yeah, I did see you in the back of the room. I said, minister, you know, I'm just here to, to help you put together this document that you promised to deliver tomorrow at nine o'clock in the meeting. She says, oh gee, I forgot about that, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to be using this room here as my study. You sit there and you write down what you th think you remember what I said. <laughs> <coughs> so by 10 o'clock, I'd finished writing down what I thought I remembered what she'd said. Uh, and she came through and she would put Basi to bed, uh, had a bit of food, and she came through, it must be about now half past ten or so, and said, let me read what you've got. So I hand over what I had there. As you can imagine, she dissected my own, my understanding of what she'd said, <laughs> analyzed it. Uh, we finished uh, that document at about seven in the morning. Um, and she duly sent me home and said, you better go get some sleep. Remember, we've got a meeting at nine. <laughs> so, uh, so that was, that was Minister Malewa. We had the meeting at nine. She produced this document and all these bureaucrats were completely amazed at what this lady had done, you know, and moved and looked after her family and made sure that the food was cooked. So that was the beginning of our relationship. I spent many a long night, and I'm not going to go into that, but the one thing, I'd, two things I want to, two more things I want to say. First, I want to speak about her being a perfectionist. That she never let anything go until it was perfect. So if you're writing a speech for her, I remember the first budget speech that, that, that I wrote for her. She wanted every single detail in there, every single, it was 19 pages long. This was her budget speech and she had 20 minutes or 25 minutes, 19 pages. I don't know how she did it, but she delivered that speech with all the detail. So, um, uh, what I can say about when you're working on a, on a speech or a piece of work like that, it's never finished until the delivery is finished. Because she's working on it, even as she's speaking, she's adding new things there. Um, so, uh, as a perfectionist, but the biggest quality I want to talk about is her heart. Mama Lewa, had such a generous heart. Yes, she could be tough and demanding and all of that, but she would give you the shirt off her back. 
She is so generous, so soft-hearted, so concerned about, about what's happening in your life. When you're in a room with Edna Malewa, she always called me Masondo. It's my Zulu name. Masondo. You felt like you were the center of the universe. You felt like you were the center of the universe. She paid attention to you as a human being. And each individual in those rooms would feel like that. She lit up the room. Rest in peace, Mama. Thank you. Thanks, DG and DDGs. Deputy Minister Barbara Thompson will deliver an address. Uh, Deputy Minister of Environment Affairs in South Africa. Thank you very much, Program Director, the Molewa family, and the extended family at large, comrades, Team Dia, led by our DG, Nosipo, Sis Bridget, my leader, Khadija, you're always at minister's side, UNEP leadership, industry, leaders of faith-based organization, government departments that are present, all our stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to first say that actually all what is happening today at the house really does not make sense to me. And I'm sure it's the case with many of you. Umfundisi said we should not always, when days like these come, we must not say why, why. But I keep on saying why. I keep on saying it, why. At one stage when I heard the news from the DG, I really, really criticized God because it just didn't make sense to me knowing, O oh Minister, how vibrant she was, how energetic she was. But I am humbled and honored at this opportunity that is afforded to me to talk about someone that I work so closely with. But where does one start to talk about minister, such a highly, highly decorated individual? I've always known comrade Edna at an ANC level. Our organization, the African National Congress, led by the former president, Zuma, at the time, so it fit to deploy both of us to this department. We were further humbled by President Matomela Ramaphosa when he also saw it fit to keep us in the same department. You can imagine what was our thinking. Are we going to be shifted? Oh my, where we are going to, who's going to be my minister, and all of that. But then we were fortunate to stay in the same department. The mandate of our organization was very clear. It was very simple, but challenging. That mandate was to make sure that we change the lives of an ordinary South African and make sure that we secure a better future for the next generation. This is the task that Minister never ever took lightly. She took it with vigor, with passion, and determination till the end. 
Minister contributed immensely to the, to the environment sector. The heartfelt messages throughout the globe serves as proof to her contribution to the sector. During our time together, I've had the pleasure of attending high-level forums internationally with our minister, where one would witness her spearheading some of the most crucial issues. And must, one must say that she is highly, highly respected globally. Through her contributions, South Africa is recognized and respected as a major, major stakeholder on these issues. Indeed, her demise is not only a loss to South Africa, but to the entire world. Minister's vast knowledge of the sector allowed her to lead the department with ease and passion. Without a doubt, Minister was one of the most hard-working ministers. Working to the early hours of the morning was normal to her. And as most officials of DIA would attest, Minister was a perfectionist. I want to say that I really, really could not keep up with Minister's pace. And I realized that some of the DDGs here did not mention that at times they would wink an eye at me, you know, to say, how do we try and make a cut the meeting? And I would just say, you know, and we would go out one by one, laughing it out. She also demanded work of high, high quality. She was strict, very strict, and very forthright, as she was always understood to be very, very principal and being fair. You know, for one to be a principled leader, you must have acquired some qualities. And for me, one of them is courage. The second one is fairness. Of course, there are others that will go along, your loyalty, honesty. But Minister was very courageous and she was very fair. So you can't have the one, you can't be fair, but you're not couraged enough, you know, to say what you want to say and vice versa. So she possessed both qualities. Through Minister Malewa's visionary leadership, the Department of Environmental Affairs has now been positioned as a critical vehicle of economic advancement in our country. At the forefront of major program, such as ocean economy, she sang it like a song. Wildlife economy as well as the waste economy. You know, Minister knew that we were actually surrounded by these natural resources I remember one day she asked me, she wanted to know what are assets in the Nguni language. So I said, uh, Minister City, Yifa, Amafa, you know, assets. So she said, with a broken Nguni, yeah, DM, Amafa Lao, Amafa Bantube to Lao. You know, I, I, I will really miss her. Ministers fight against rhino poaching and the negative impact of pollution is also well documented. When she fell ill, she was supposed to have gone to Amsen, but then she could not go 
So I was asked to go along with the South African uh, delegation. We have not even reported to you, uh, DG, that at that Amsen gathering, South Africa was awarded. We received an award for having spearheaded some of these environmental issues. And I said to one of the ministers, I think it was the one from Namibia, I said, this is for minister, because all of this is her work, as well as the former deputy minister, Umama Umapurafasi. For me personally, it has been nothing but an honor to serve as a deputy minister to Comrade Edna, and I will always be ever grateful for this opportunity. Comrade Edna knew what it meant to be a team player and always consulted and solicited views of all our stakeholders. Over the years, Comrade Edna not only became my minister or our minister, but she became a mentor, a sister, and friend. Throughout our informal relationship over the years, Comrade Edna and myself never ever addressed one another by name. She would always call me sister, and when she was in high spirit, then she, she would say, sisters, or she would say, sisters, and I would just laugh, and I say, what is that supposed to mean, minister, and she will, you know, you know what she looked like when she was in a good mood. This compassion was not only accorded to me as her deputy, but to millions of citizens of our country. Comrade Edna was so full of life and energy to such an extent that her death does not make sense to many, including myself as well. And I'm sure that goes to the family. In our official engagement, we attended together. Minister would walk so fast that I would not be able to keep up with her pace. I would then always remind her and say, sisters, I'm older than you. <laughs> and she would say, by how much, sisters? Then I say, by three years. Then she would laugh. She said, no, it's not too much. Uh, just yesterday, somebody uh, sent me a picture that was taken uh, in Cape Town where minister was practically holding and pulling me by the hand, simply because I could not keep up the pace. Uh, apparently this picture was taken by some mischievous uh, official of our department. I will dearly miss her for all that. In all the years that I've worked with Minister Molewa, never has she ever, not even on a single occasion, embarrassed, undermined, or disrespected me, and for that, I sincerely thank her. <laughs> to the officials, you would know what happens, what we sometimes see in the media. I will not get into that, because I do not want to get into a little bit of trouble. To the officials of the Department of Environment and the Ministry in particular, let me extend my appreciation for the support you extended to Comrade Edna in the execution of her duties. I'm fully aware that at times, as politicians, we may frustrate you, push you too far. You know that, and she was good at that. And sometimes we would seem to be very, very impossible but please bear with us. Remember the commitment we have made to our people in the quest
to transform society. Your contribution will never go unnoticed. You are a hardworking team. Again to the family, myself and the entire department, we would like to extend our condolences to you. We have lost someone who was very dear to us. We also express our gratitude to you for having allowed us to share, Minister, with you. To Umama, Comrade Edna's mother, as you age, may the good Lord comfort you in these difficult times. I know how much Comrade Edna loved her mom. She always spoke about her. To my beloved ANC, let me also express my gratitude for giving me the opportunity of partnering me with this wonderful woman who has left an indelible mark in my life as well as to many South Africans. In conclusion, I decided to write this in the Nguni because she loved Nguni, just that she could not express herself in it. She always used to say, uh, sisters, you know, I speak Isisulu, uh, and she would say to me, you speak Isizutu, <laughs> and we would laugh. I'm saying to her, Hambagashle, don't be emshope, and she, efana neishlabati Thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and the growth you contributed in our life. Thank you for serving your people and your country with distinction. We will surely miss you. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Deputy Minister. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to now invite the representative of the Mo Molewa and the Meti families, starting with Mr. Fana Meti. If we can come to the fore, while Godfrey readies himself to also deliver remarks. And uh, our last speaker will be Nunu Mohaswa, the daughter. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Let me just greet you in the name of Mighty God and also welcome uh, our senior, the DGs, and uh, the colleague or the co-workers of uh, my late sister. I'm here to represent the family of Meti. I'm, I'm going to talk about, about two things. First of all, I just want to, th to thank the colleague, the, the staff of uh, Etna made. You were so very good to us from the day one when we knew you until to the last day. And I also want to thank my dear, the government for supporting us through thick and thin. I know that you love our sister, then we love her. But there are something which I didn't understand from uh, one, uh, once I was still a young boy from 11 years, it just make a puzzle for now. Now those puzzles, can, uh, I can see them as a full thing. You know, when we were growing, when I was still 11 years, I used to have many, many fights with my sister. Many, many fights. And then if ever you check uh, today, when we play soccer, then we are having first leg and second leg. That was more than 30 legs, not two legs. And the main thing, you know, what was the cause of that fight? My father, we were staying at the farm because we were born at Wombats, but my father was a principal at the, about 11 miles from Wombats. Then at that farm, 
We, they used to have what you call the traditional school. I don't know if other than you are aware about it. During that period of the traditional uh, school, my father will say to me, you must take care of your sister that they must not abduct her to that school. Did you hear me, Fana? You must take care of her. I don't want her to go to that, uh, the traditional school. I will try all my level best to take her, but always she, she win. Then I could, when I arrived at home, they, we said, then why is that? I don't know. I'll get a serious beating because uh, I didn't take care of her. Then uh, after they beat me, then I'll want to revenge to her that uh, I get that beating because of you, then you, you run away from me. Then I'll do beating to her. Then uh, little did know that uh, she too is going to revenge. While I was uh, sitting, maybe doing nothing, I'll just hear a lot of face just came to my mind. It beat me very, very hard. Ne? Then uh, when I surprised, what are we fighting? Say, you beat me the last, then I'll show you what you are doing. So it continued, continued about those beating. And uh, the other one, which I want to remember, is when she was arrested at Wombats. Basi, may you please stand up? When we, call, when we talk about Basi, this is Basi. You sit down, Papa. My sister was arrested at Wombats while Basi was about 11 months old. And uh, she was taken to confirmation at John Foster. Myself, my father, and my mom, we drove to Joburg with 1,300 Nizan to go and pay her a visit. You know, we found her in a very, very horrible state. They call us to a certain room. They show us a lot of ammunition. They said that you are your sister or you are your daughter. She's refusing to tell us where, that, where did he get this ammunition. She is trying to make herself Jesus Christ. She say that a lot of ammunition belong to her. So until she talk, we are not going to release her. So we give you about five minutes to go and talk with her. My father said, why don't you tell these people? She said, Papa, they are mine. They were a lot, lot of ammunition. They say, she said, they are mine. Then uh, until they rescued to another room. But there was something now which came to my mind. I was crying by that time. Then I say, if ever they say efficient for the people to cross, I'm going to cross, I'm going to avenge for my sister. But uh, when she came out with the certain agreement, I, I, I don't remember very well, I was very young. They say something like, I, Pretoria Hoods, Minez, ne? Then uh, I go to her and I say, my sister, I'm also going to out of the country. She said, you remain at, the, at home. I'll take care. Remain at home and look after the kids. Really, I remain at home. And when my parents was at home, but we relocated at Mawupan. I was about 15 to 16 years. We stay at Mawupan. I was the parent taking care of, uh, of my siblings. When they called the parents' meeting, I was the one who was getting to the meeting. As, much, as, as little as I I was eyeing for them, doing everything. My sister, they were sharpening her to be this tiger you know together. <clears throat> then uh, when my parents joined us at, at Maupan, we were all qualified. My, my siblings, they are all qualified, but my sister was just moving around and doing other sad things. Then uh, we are from a big family which don't forget God. We knew that uh, yesterday I was not well. I went to the hospital because uh, I could see that I could no longer stand up. The main reason is that uh, I was uh, blaming myself that uh, I failed my sister. The time she went at the Louis Pasha, then I was saying we took a very long time maybe to raise our hands that uh, things are not getting well. 
But uh, something came to me that uh, if uh, God have spoken, there is nothing we could uh, do. So we didn't took a very long time to do this. That is why I was having that serious problem. Then uh, she went to UNITAS. Also, she tried all her level best to fight. But uh, most unfortunately, God need her. When we check uh, the way she was communicating with us, she was telling us something, but little did we know that uh, she w she's telling us something. For the past uh, maybe six to seven months, when she's abroad, she was just uh, sending us a lot of pictures. Then we say, Sister Rawat's and now she's going to uh, make a lot of, in our, in our phone, they are still going to crash. She will send more than 30 photos in, our, in our, our cell phones, just sending, sending them, they say, every event. And when she arrives at, uh, overseas, she'll say, then I've arrived very safely on the WhatsApp group. We say, thank you, sister, God is great. At first, she was not doing the thing, but recently she was doing that. Last time, about uh, two months back, I was admitted at uh, Agassi. She came to visit me and say, Sefana, how are you going? I said, no. I I'm going well. He said, I don't want to see you here. You must wake up. You are having a task to look at the family. She went home. Just go. The next day, I go out of hospital. So because uh, she just came then, give the instruction and said, then, I don't want to see you. Go home. Uh, she mean a lot to us. She has contributed a lot to our family. That you are so, are so very emotional. I still remember last year on the 1st September, she was supposed to go somewhere. My boy was uh, sh shot by somebody. She was critically ill. She dropped everything. She went to hospital and uh, through her face, through her face, Things managed to happen, and God saved my boy. But during that time, let me just say something. There was something which is very disturbing, which I want to share with you. Then those who are writing the newspaper, they won't get it from me, if ever you don't get it here. While we are at the outside, she received a call from somebody who said that, we are waiting you to a certain meeting. Then I, I hear her saying, I've reported to the president and also the chairperson of that committee that uh, my, my, my son, she's, he's critically ill. So I've sent my apology to that uh, committee. On the conversation, I could hear that uh, they are fighting. That person was instructing her that uh, even if ever then uh, my son is uh, not well, they are need, she's supposed to come to the meeting. I hear saying that you are not my boss. I'm not going to report there. You can go whatever you want or do whatever you want. Then it's when I hear that uh, she's very angry. And uh, maybe let me just say that I want to thank all those people who love her and those who didn't love her. Those who didn't love her, then I want to thank you in the spirit. You didn't know that you are sharpening the tiger. When maybe you tried to, they were trying to pull her down, God was raising her up. Uh, she had that fighting spirit because she didn't start to fight here at uh, the parliament. She started to fight with me. <laughs> and uh, let me just tell you, there is something which I didn't you, hear you mention. You talk about her humbleness. She is very stubborn when need arises. And uh, once she said that I can beat you, she can fight. We are from Wombats, but we are uh, sitting staying at a certain uh, farm just uh, between the Wombats and uh, Mamit like that, they call it Ranaman. She could also cycle. When uh, she's getting to Mamit like maybe our score at home, 
it's not okay. We are taking two bicycles to her mommy uh, clerk. Then she will cycle there, then I'll come with two bicycles back. I didn't, uh, by that time, I didn't realize that when my father said, take care of her, what is going to happen? Recently then, uh, when she was at hospital, when I think I can see that the things are not going well, I went, I called, I was, uh, uh, Love Delhi, I said, Love, I was Love Delhi. Can you see the doctor are fighting? She was not at the hospital, I was Del, Del, uh, Love Delhi. I called her. I say, things are very bad here. Do you have the direct contact with your chief, Barnabas? Can you call her or call, call him? He said, I don't have direct, correct directors. I say, may you please call somebody and ask Barnabas to pray for this lady. I need your help. We have done the, all those things. My sister, all my sister, my siblings, I said, what is the name of your bishop? Go and call the bishop so that she, they can come and pray for us. We have called a number of priests to come and pray for us, but that was the will of God that uh, she must go. She has done her, uh, her work and she has complete with distinction. Then our main task was now to inform our mother that uh, she's no longer there. We had a very serious confusion. When we call our mom, we will head to the theater room or the, the, the ICU unit. You know, we are afraid that uh, she's going to collapse and die. She just go and touch our sister and say, at now, Wanaka, over to South Africa, you have done your race, and I'm very proud of you. Go well. That is the legacy she has left us. <laughs> if ever maybe we check at her bank, maybe she doesn't have more than 100,000 because she knew that she's going to work for the government and the people of South Africa. And we knew that one day she will not be the minister. I was uh, left with that task. When she became the premier of Northwest, I called my siblings. I said, then uh, you must, I, I'm, I'm calling you here that uh, we are at the spotlight, but we are not premiers. So behave, please, for the sake of my sister. Because if ever you don't behave, each and every person, he or she is looking at us. They want to find the, the mistake from us and say the brother or the sister of the minister. So they won't get anything from us. Please behave. And we stood low. That is why even from that, you, you couldn't get anything from us because we knew that uh, we are on spotlight. We didn't want to arise so that people they can see. Maybe it's for the very first time people they say that, that now she's born from the family of Medi. But uh, that is the way we say then. Uh, so we don't have any problem. If I've got a spoken, the only thing that we, you must just help us. Yesterday in the night, we received a sad message that uh, my aunt, the sister of my mom, has just passed on. And uh, my brother was at Eugene Marais. He's not well, but he'll join us. By the grace of God, ne? he will be fine. Ne? And then uh, we know, while I was still doing metric, they say certain book we are reading, they say boys, they say, if I could, they said the tree of liberty grows strong and more when watered with the blood of Mata. So we, have, we know that, uh, that every uh, comrade, that is the way she can uh, find her death. So by so, she has done a lot. I know then where she is, she's with the angels. She has made a commitment with our dear God, covenant which cannot be broken by any person on the earth. She is so very okay. Then uh, my burden now is to take care of uh, my brother and siblings and her children, and I'm going to do this with distinctions. If, if things need that I should take on head, I'm definitely good. I can be stubborn if it, I, I, I also like. Ne? Thank you. I would like to remit. Um, I would like to now invite Dr. Godfrey Metti, who also is going to deliver a few remarks.
while um, Nunu uh, will, will deliver the last address on behalf of the family. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Uh, as I was introduced, Kenna Godfrey Meti, uh, I will be representing family. Yaba Meti, who I said na atalusi ngo ting, and also family abo mule yachamulewa. It is always very difficult for us as family Meti. We very, we observe protocol so much and having to step. Morita Gonza with Fana is always an honor and it's not easy. Uh, as a family, we were very comforted by your words. We had the privilege of uh, owning our Etna as uh, her family, and later we had to share her with our country, beloved country, South Africa, and the greater globe. As a family, we always asked ourselves, our sister, what type of a leader is she? Is she a leader whose followers can be willing to die for? Or is a type of leader whose followers will be willing to assassinate? The question was answered today. We have realized that she lived to be that remarkable leader whose followers have been here on this podium and they have confirmed that they were more than willing to die for her. It is our pride as a family. She was powerful, indeed. Her power was legitimate as bestowed by the South African government but she also had expert power. She was well read and she liked reading. I'm a professional, but always when I consulted with Aus Edna on any matter, she would always say, go through, go back to school. And I'm like, Aus Edna, really? But she had expert power and information power. In her last gathering with our family, she recommended about eight books that we must read. In fact, when she was in China, I sent her a message to say, please give us the authors of those books. However, we will get them from the videos. So her power was expert. Leadership is about a leader, followers, and the situation. We have learned, as you are talking now, to say she was very influential. She had a vision. I mean, if you read, in fact, it's more than a vision, it's charisma. When you check Operation uh, Pagisa, and I think it's Vision 2032, under correction, where it is expected to generate about 177 billion to our GDP. A leader with such a vision is of course of great charisma. And as a family we are proud to have a sister who has a vision that is more like faith beyond faith. We have learned from this podium, which is also our pride, that she worked well with everyone that she was well renowned and recognized globally. We have also learned from this podium that our sister had a very diplomatic way of getting her requirements, her visions being driven to her to his I mean to her followers. How she would switch from being angry to shouting people and telling them they should take their work serious, to, to attaining the objectives of the mission and excelling in her performance. She was quite diplomatic. Her leadership style was transformational. 
He developed her followers. We heard the testimonies this morning. He was encouraging her followers. She was encouraging her followers. She even had a social relationship with her followers. Some regarded her as a mother. What a pride we have in her as the Metis. Our sister did us proud. She represented us well. She branded our family. Branding is about uniqueness. It's about doing things different. Differentiation. She was different. How she branded our family was through performance. She was a great performer who won a lot of awards. She branded by performance. She branded our family with a wow. And I will mention a few moments where we felt wow as a family. She worked under all the presidents, democratically elected presidents of our country, South Africa. President Nelson Mandela had trust in our sister. President Tabombegi had faith in our sister. President Kalema Motlante felt the need to have him in his team. President Zuma kept him in his, in his team. And the current president, Ramaphosa, is still, was still using our sister. That was a wow moment for the Meti family. When she was awarded the high, I thank you. When she was awarded the highest honor by the French government, it was a wow moment for us as a family. It was further said that only Madiba, Nelson Mandela, was awarded such award in South Africa. Our sister was the second one to be awarded. And that was a wow. I can go on and on mentioning the wows that she branded uh, our family with. Now, as a family, we enjoyed Aus Edna. She never missed any family occasion or she attended most of them. And wherever she went, she would talk, encourage us as a family. In our last encounter with her, that was last month, in a family gathering where she was requested to talk, she said, I want to host you. We have annual uh, gathering, family gatherings as a family. She said, this year I want to host you. I want all the family to visit me. I will be your host. And then she left for China. And we keep asking ourselves, could this be what she meant when she said she wanted to host us? It will be very difficult to find a replacement for Aus Etna in our hearts, as a family, in the country, and the whole world. We are saddened by her departure. But of course, she left us with a legacy. She used to talk about triple bottom line, that's the people, planet, and profit. She wouldn't emphasize more on profit. But when we see the, the prospected revenue in the ocean's economy, of course, a lot of people will benefit. Of course, employment will be created. Our GDP, nominal, will improve. She left us a legacy from the triple bottom line. She was so considerate about the future generations, sustainability, that when we, use the, when we use our beautiful resources today, we must be mindful of the future generation. Is that not a mother who's very considerate about future generation, who left so much work to contribute to us legacy? As the Meti family, and as Abud Fana has said, we are very, very sad. And we want to thank all of you, the department, the DG who has always been with us, Kondrong, and her team that I cannot mention all, your amazing support, every one of you who is here to come and pay tribute. We really, really are grateful. And we agree 
that it had to do though it is difficult for us to accept Kamatlalona Ramohela Kyalewa. Thanks, uh, Godfrey. Uh, Nunu uh, with Didi will come to talk about their mom. Thank you, Program Director Ndade Albi Mudise. I greet you all in the name of our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, who our mother not only loved, not only had a relationship with, but served until her last breath. Um, DM, Me Barbara Thompson, uh, I greet you. I also greet the other deputy ministers that are here, um, the members of the diplomatic corps that are here, and um, all protocol observed. I thought earlier that I had seen um, Deputy Minister um, Hanekom. I, I may have been uh, mistaken. Um, to my family, to friends, colleagues that are here, Baneng Baberakale Mama, I greet you all. Um, it is on a sad note that we are say, standing here today, and yet our hearts celebrate. We celebrate because we had a privilege to call Me Edna Bomo Edith Meti Mulewa, our mother. We had the privilege to be raised by the best. We had the privilege to be mentored by the best. We had the privilege to be loved by the best. And I stand here on behalf of my siblings, Didi, who is standing here with me, Michael, who is still sorting out some few work things at, in Mafiking, and of course, Basiame, who is sitting here. I, I want to thank you all for the love that has been pouring, really the tributes that have been coming, that have been strengthening us, um, and, and, and the prayers that have, been, that have been pouring out to give us strength. We are truly grateful for that. Um, I also want to particularly want to speak to the dear family. Um, and to the dear family, I would like to say thank you for being a part of Mama's life for the last eight years. Thank you for being there for her, for being her family when she was away from home, for caring for her, for the late night dinners that you've had, for the calls that you, you took in the middle of the night, for the text messages that you received, and the endless WhatsApp messages that you had to receive for her, from her. Thank you for not only taking those, but for being understanding and also for being patient with her and understanding that her intent was to serve and to serve the people of this country and to serve and to deliver, to bring service delivery for what she um, was actually um, called to do. Um, I particularly want to say that the Dia family has not just been Mama's family as it had rightly been said earlier. The Dia family became our family as well. And I have had the privilege to um, work very closely with many of you um, over these last um, eight years that Mama was there. Um, and I can attest that she loved her country. She loved her job to the end. And most of all, she loved the people. And I would like to say to you that Mama loved the Department of Environmental Affairs. She loved each one of you there, and that's why she gave you her best. I would like to pass special gratitude to uh, Mayor Barbara Thompson, uh, the Deputy Minister, for having worked so well with Mama and having worked together with her to deliver on the mandate, on the constitutional mandate that you were both given to deliver to South Africans the right 
to have their environment protected. For all of us that we can say, you have truly given us an environment that is not harmful to our existence. And for that, I truly thank you. I know that she used to say, DM, uh, let's work together. I remember the last um, budget vote that we had in Cape Town. And as we were meeting by the elevators, she said, DM, come, Pela. Harilo Khalumalinyat, Gel Power. That is what she used to say. And to DG, I would like to thank you for being diligent in your work, for bringing joy in every day, um, in her everyday working life. Um, she always used to talk about how excellent your work is. Um, what my mind showed was that she taught us that we may be able to support her and support her well. So she also wanted us to understand what was going on in her department. She made sure that we understand what her work entailed and not only as to what her diary looks like or where, her, where she had to go, but the actual content of what it is that she had to do. So she always used to say, you need to understand content. So I would go with her to the African National Congress conferences and they would speak about no bala or no, conf or no content. And I never used to understand that, but she said, it means that you must understand what's going on. If you are to support me, you need to know what's going on in my life. And I thank you for that, ZG. Um, to the Chief of Staff, Paul, um, you have walked a very long road with her. Um, we started with you in the Northwest province. So Paul is actually one of the people that, um, that raised us as well. Um, and I think, you know, in, the, in our schools, people used to think that, they used to wonder, do you have a white dad or an Indian dad or another white dad? Because it would be Paul, it would be Alf, and it would be Kay. Sorry. I apologize for that. So um, I know that Mama was, was harsh. And I understood her harshness to be love. Because she always used to say, I get at the, you know, these women, Baba soft, you need to be tough. Uh, you cannot be crying every single corner. You must be strengthened. You must be tough because the world is looking at you. So when we were talking about Mbogodo, we were really referring to my mother. And um, that is how she loved. She corrected those that she loved. She ensured that she would push you, she would be harsh, so that you bring out the best that you have. She was actually wanting to bring out the best in you. Um, and um, so I know another thing that I can say is Mama treated her entire team, like one of, you know, like her own family. Um, she loved them like her own family and she loved them like her own children. Um, it was never, she never had a life outside Dia. She never had a home life and a, an official life. She actually always used to say, I remember the one point where I said to her, but you know, Mama, you always take this public servant thing too seriously. And she said to me, you are never not a public servant. Um, even when you're in your bedroom, you are a public servant. So you must always think about the people um, and think about how you serve them wherever you are. Um, to her support team, um, thank you for being there for her for really traveling with her, taking care of her when, when she was sick. And I want to particularly thank Gail and Claude, who truly worked 24-7 with her, um, who ensured that they were there even on the weekends. Um, and I must say that Gail and, and, and Claude have never seen themselves only as support for Mama but they have seen themselves as support for us as well. So they would always ask, are you okay? Have you eaten? When mama is not around, they would want to find out, do you guys have bread at home? Do you have milk? And you know, we used to say, we are a bit more grown up now, but we really truly do appreciate um, your love and your support. Um, to her protectors, Warrant Officer Billy Miller, Sergeant John Hockley, 
Hockey, Sergeant Abram Guna, and Sergeant Edwin Mashishi. I want to thank you for having served her with love and excellence, for being with her in the hospital, even in these last days, for being there with the family and praying for her healing um, until her last breath. I want to say that you have truly served her, and for that, I thank you. To the people she affection, affectionately referred to as Team SA, um, and this was her pride, I must say. This is her climate change negotiating team, which was led by our fools. Uh, and um, I want to thank you for the constant feedback. I had the opportunity to travel with her to a number of these uh, conferences. And um, so I was always sleeping with her in the bedroom. And you can imagine that uh, she would not rest until she knows that they've got the final text. So I want to thank you for the, for the updates, and Judy as well, I see Judy sitting, sitting there. I want to thank you for the updates that you kept on giving her um, to say this is how far we are with the text, particularly on that very troublesome Article 9, which kept her awake for a very long time. Um, so I really want to say thank you for that. Um, to the DDGs for having working so hard, um, also receiving text messages, in the morning to say, can we meet at home on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock for an hour? And then you know you're going to stay there and uh, you would be lucky if you leave before midnight. Thank you for um, having worked that hard. And I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you to your families um, because you sacrificed your time with family as well um, to ensure that she succeeds in her work, to ensure that she and DM deliver on the mandate that they have been, that they, that they've been, um, uh, you know, called to to deliver on. Um, so I do thank you for that. Um, you know, her success was not hers alone. Um, it is says that it is said sometimes that behind every successful woman, uh, behind every successful man, there's a woman. But in this case, I will say behind every successful and powerful woman, there is an equally powerful team. And I applaud you for that. Uh, to the communications team, Bo Ozanele and Tate Albi, and the team at large, I want to thank you really for working tires tirelessly. Um, the speeches were changed from time to time. Uh, it is indeed true, Mama was a perfectionist. Um, she always said, if you do something, do it right or don't do it at all. Um, that is what she taught us as well. So I thank you for allowing her to teach you um, as she did, and including teaching you English, as she would always say, that English Yagoharangua would not work. She would constantly send back letters and say, um, ask them to rework that letter, because I will not put my name on that thing. If it is not perfect, I will not put my name on that thing. So really thank you for your patience and your love and um, allowing her there. To, to actually just um, um, be there for you and sharpen you. Um, and I think more on a personal note, we knew her as mama. Uh, you knew her as minister, and I know that she was a mother to most of you. Um, so although I stand here with my one sibling um, and saying I represent her and uh, Michael and Bassi, I do acknowledge that there is a host of us that, um, that had the privilege to call her mama. We could actually fill this stage, and I'm not sure, Paul, what the ministerial handbook would say about that, uh, but that is just how it is. She had many, many children. Um, you know, so we knew her as mama, and I particularly... Uh, affectionately called her Mama Ding. Um, she was she was she was really my supporter. Um, she was she was my best friend. Uh, she would call me also very early hours of the morning, six o'clock, and ask me, "Are you at home?" And by that, she would be referring to, "Am I at her house?" And I would be saying, "Mama, but I'm a married woman. I'm still at my house." And she would say. Um, but you should have actually left earlier to be here so that we, you know, we have quite a lot of things that, that we are doing. 
Um, and um, so we, um, we share, we stand here at this very difficult time, strengthened um, because of the memories that we share with her. Because we had our own private moments where we could just lie on the bed and get into her bedroom every single morning and find her holding her phone, which we, um, we began to actually give it a name because she, never, she, she would never separate with her phone. Um, so we, we, we nicknamed her phone and we said, let's name this phone Sophie. And um, whenever we were sitting at a dinner table, we would say, Mommy, should we set up a, should we, uh, set a place for Sophie? Will Sophie be coming with us to the table? She had her phone wherever she was. Um, because she didn't want to miss on anything that is important, whether it was the African National Congress work or the department work or a colleague that called to say they need friend, uh, they need help or um, just the woman that is calling from, from Pizidi Sulejang that she called, she, she, she loved so much to say, you know, there are women, Baba Godi Kaolo, that would call me, you know, and if a woman from Pizidi Sulejang sends me a call, please call me. I need to be able to respond to that. So we understood that that is the kind of person that she was. Um, and one particular memory that comes to mind is um, when I was 10 years old and my sister was seven years old and we were lying um, on the bed in our, in our house, go uh, unit eight in Kharangua, and we had um, a Carol King album, we call it album, but she called it record then. I guess you know the, uh, then it was called record. So we were sitting there, lying on the bed, and she was teaching us uh, the song, Carol King, You've Got a Friend. And as we were sitting there, she said, I need to teach you to sing it in an orderly way. There's the right way of singing it, and there's the wrong way of singing it. You need to sing it note by note by note. I must say, I still have not learned that because my husband is still trying to teach me that today. Um, but nonetheless, that was our special moments. That was, that was our special songs. So we would walk into her bedroom, learn these songs. We would walk into the bedroom and joke all, all morning and plan what we needed to plan. And these jokes are what she carried with even when she traveled without us. Because she would call me in the middle of the night, uh, uh, Butshoni, uh, she would call in the middle of the night, you know, I would be in Colombia, she would be in Colombia and I'm in South Africa, but she is calling me to ask me, what was that joke that you were saying? How does it go again? Um, I'm sitting here with Minister Dipua Peters. Will you repeat the joke so that she can hear it? So she kept us working really throughout, but um, today I'm grateful that those jokes warmed her heart and they kept her going even when times were difficult wherever she was. Um, she taught us everything we know, really. Um, she, she taught us how to walk. She was very particular about how you walk. Um, she would tell you, why are you walking like a horse? Um, a lady doesn't walk like that. A lady doesn't sit like that. A lady doesn't come down the stairs like that. A lady doesn't ascend like that. So she taught us, she taught us how to behave. She taught us how to present ourselves, even how to talk to people. Um, and she always said that, you must remember that people see something in you, but you must determine what it is that people see in you. So a lot of times, many of you were asking where she gets her strength from. And I can assure you that it was in the Bioplus. <laughs> so she always kept Bioplus in her bag, but um, she often meditated on scripture because she loved the Lord. She was strengthened in the word. So she had a favorite, a favorite scripture which she often meditated on, which was Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31, which says, he gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So now you understand where she got her strength from and why she was walking the way she was walking. DM, if it is any consolation, I could not keep up with her as well. 
So I was always running behind her and walking behind her, but I was always learning. So there was a question also as I was sitting there, um, where you know we were talking about the issue of time and how she did things in a hasty manner. And I always asked her, but why are you so rushed? Mama uh, sort of think, thought that we, there were more hours in the day than there were. Um, she, would, she would really drive the, the diary team crazy uh, and say, I want to see this one and this one and this one, and you know, want to make the impossible work, and they must just make it work because it is possible to happen. Um, so we devised a plan to get the hair team in, the nail team in, the eating team in, you know, and everybody uh, that wanted to do the submissions. And that's how we got to that place where everybody was doing everything at the same time. Um, but as I was reflecting on um, some of the talks that we had with her, I remember particularly when we shared one day, we were sharing a scripture. Um, on time and why she did things the way she did things. And she referred me to Ecclesiastes 9, 11, that says, I have seen something under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor f does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happens to them all. So she was saying whether you are learned whether you are strong, whether you are weak, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And she used her time wisely. So I want to say that that is the lesson that we've learned, that we need to use our time wisely. She understood that she was a steward, given a mandate with a time limit, and she maximized all the time that she had. Um, I lastly want to um, give special thanks to um, three people particularly um, that she relied on as advisors. Mayor uh, Bridget Mabandla, Mama Bridget, um, I want to say really thank you. Um, you have walked the road, the political road with Mama. You were not only just her advisor, um, you were a friend, you were a sister, and uh, she always used to say, you know, like Mama Bridget is the one that was BBT, born way before technology, and then I was born before technology, and you guys are born in technology. Um, and I want to say to you that she loved you so, so much. She relied upon you um, for, you know, political guidance and sometimes just an ear, you know, a sisterly ear, and I thank you for being there for her. Um, and to Khadija uh, Magadu Bretlo, the, you know, you were, you were a special advisor to her, and um, she relied upon you for, you know, for wisdom, just for advice. Um, I thank you for being there for her. I thank you for, even on those international trips, you know, sitting in the lounge, um, redrafting speeches five minutes before she goes to the podium. Um, and I, I want to say thank you for the nerves of steel that you have. I, I know she kept rescue in her bag. I do suspect you do have rescue in the bag, and that's how you got through it as well. So I do thank you for that. Um, and lastly, um, uh, Professor Siposepe, uh, Mama relied on you for advice. She relied on you just, you know, for an year when things got tough. And I thank you for being there um, for, for her. And, um, and, you know, through thick and thin, and not looking at um, what she had and, and you know, the, 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 the influence. Um, you know, one of my mentors, the late Dr. Miles Monroe said, when you choose a successor, you need to choose somebody who loves you and not somebody who loves your power and not somebody who loves your influence because when you are dead, they are going to chase your children away. And, um, and I thank you really for having been with us at the hospital. Um, for being there with us when we prayed, for being there with us when we trusted, and just giving her support when she was there. I, I, I truly, and I think I speak on behalf of uh, my siblings as well, to say thank you for that. Um, Boma Lome, um, who have raised us now, I was, I was raised to go hameti, ki hole to go hameti, ki hodis to ki malume fana. Uh, who was standing here before before I could come and speak. Maluma, you have been a pillar of strength to the family. You have been a pillar of strength to Mama. 
um, you know, she she relied on upon you for for very many things. Um, she she would be comfortable to delegate things to you, and she had always said that. I know that even if I die, my children will be in a good place because my brother will be there. Um, to the entire Meti family, Bomama Lome, sorry, Bomama Lome, Bomani. So I call them in very funny names like Malome Abudfana, Mamane Mapula, Rakadi Gogo, you know, that's, that's how I call them. I really want to say thank you for, for, for loving my mother. I know that she was your sister. And, um, and you had to love her because she was your sister. And um, so none of us are perfect, but you loved her even more in her imperfections. And you understood that that is how God has made her. And that in those imperfections, there's a lot of perfection that comes out of that. So I truly want to say we love you. We appreciate you and um, the, the, you know, the support that uh, you have given us. Uh, is truly, truly appreciated. I also want to say to, to our spouses, particularly to my husband, Judah, thank you truly for being there um, at this difficult time, for praying with me, with us as a family, uh, for those nights when we took communion, um, you know, and, um, and um, just even the support from the church that you had arranged um, for Mama to be prayed over, to be anointed, to ensure that um, you know she 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 is well in her soul and she's taken care of. I truly appreciate that. Um, on behalf of my brother-in-law Tabang, uh, my sister's husband, I also want to say thank you for um, for truly being there um, and being with us in hospital day in and day out. Uh, to Ntefo, who's not here as well, uh, you know we we were praying as a family. And we, we understand that uh, there is power in prayer. In actual fact, the day before Mama uh, passed away, we got into the room. And as the doctors were telling us that, you know, she's got complications, that, uh, you know, this organ is not working and that organ is not working, I remember the three of us standing there and saying, we are going to stand on the word of God. We are going to stand on the promises of God. We are not going to believe the report of the doctors, but it, if it is God's will, then God will do his will. We prayed over her that night before she passed. And in the morning, when they called us um, to say that we must quickly come to the hospital, we met as siblings in the house at six in the morning and we prayed. And we prayed, we were saying, Lord, we are, um, we are just surrendering her into your hands. Let your will be done. What will be, will be, and it will be your will. Um, to um, you know, our, our very recent Magoti, uh, Azi, um, you know, you you know very well that Mama was looking forward to the birth of your child. Uh, she came back from China with a, a suitcase full of clothes for the baby, and um, she, though she has departed, though she's not here with us, um, she will forever be with us, and she will forever be a granny to your child. And um, one thing that comforted her even in the end was that we are together, we are united, that we will be able to stand and truly take care of one another. At her last, last year when we had her 60th birthday, I said to her, Mama, you always worried about what would happen to us if you had to pass. But I assured her that even if she were to go and be with the Lord, that we will be okay because we are strengthened. Um, she would be okay. Um, we would be okay because she has taught us well. And, uh, and that also the Lord is caring us. So um, with those few words, I would really like to say thank you very much for, for your love, your support, and for your prayers that are continuing to go out for us. Thank you. And all protocol observed. Um, I just wanted to thank you, um, those who are all here, those who have been coming to the house um, uh, since this weekend. I want to thank you, those who have taken to social media to show the love that you have shown for our mother. Um, it was mentioned the hours that were spent at home. And yes, we had a mother who was not 
um, you know, the typical mom who, you know, 90% of her job is to take care of just solely her children. She had a much bigger mandate than that. Um, but I want to thank you because it was not wasted. Um, it, was, it was costly. It was costly for us. But the love that you are showing us back, um, the love that you are pouring out for her, the appreciation, the legacy Yahai, that you're emphasizing will carry on. Um, it shows that the benefits are far more than what we'll ever know, and it was worth it. And from that, from her, we are learning as well to be more than what we think we can be. So for that, I thank you. Thanks, uh, Didi. Thank you to um, Nuno. Pastor Musutla, we are in your capable hands. Lere ki bo nenguye na ki bo ne bo mulo tabo yeling tabo yeling o mure ha ina. Kana kanyorwa kana Utle katswa ki bata katsielwa Is that all? Then I did it so. Let's try this one. Take that one. Hanti Jesu unampo na kile la joa ampita ampita ritogo na ufole. Regardez la fatigue qu'on fait là, qui a le dû me dire ça. Quand il dit cela, on a Jésus-Christ et Nazareth. Amen. Qui le dû me dire ça, quand il dit cela, on a Jésus-Christ et Nazareth. Alléluia. Qui est bon à nous, c'est que nous sommes là, nous behind time. Our last memorial service, nous sommes le ministre. Lohonarinzi the whole day. But because on aliting and because on antata, it's a high ema a bari leskebe belatsamaya. Kibata or lutuel lemurutuaka. Yano today she is not here. Akizuruko emel wakemang. Amen. Kirata hudu medisa. My family, the medicine, all the DGs and the TDGs, the medicine, Bana, Bamme, Minister, the medicine, the Deputy Minister. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I go to the wait, I'm going to be very, very brief. I just want to mention, Hori, my name is Jonas Masota. I am the pastor and a chaplain in the police, and I'm a singer. I like singing. And uh, the minister used to call me to sing for her. In all her departments where she used to work, 
I used to sing for her. And above all, we became very close. And at some stage, I was also bereaved. I lost my wife. And she came. And she strengthened me during that time. And I go hope all it was at night. Colonel Mapias, I don't think Colonel the Minister saying she did it. I am Colonel Mapias. She stood up in a memorial service, and she said, "Muruti, I always call you to come and sing for me, and I always call you to come and preach wherever I go. But today, how na mata." Today, you can't even lift your finger. That's why I am here with you, to come and strengthen you. So, somebody stood here and said, this is like a dream. When I received a message on, sa on Saturday, Horish is no more. I also did not want to believe it. Even now, I still think Hori. Rekatsuha from this dream, somebody abare morona, April Fool, Kineget Lalakalona. But unfortunately, she is no more. And I want to say, Ho Banabahai Bahameti, Le Baha Molewa, Mudimo Utale Fodisa. Eh, Baba Mbaruna Khalere Tsebi Bate Reyante Le Tsuele Labuluna Baba Mbaruna Le Rebona For the first time But we labored with her eh, Muna Khaim South Africa I remember Kitoya Mulin Swing Now Now But I remember She called me From Pulukwani I was singing In Pulukwani And she said Muruti, I want you here. Go Olympias, Olympia, what's that, that, that stadium? So go Rustenbeck. Ki Olympia. Olympias. Amen. And I drove all the way from Poloko. I need to go and sing in, 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 in Olympia Stadium. And when I got there, the program was just to go to the end. And the Bani Bali thing those days, Bani Bali try to stop her. And she came in a typical way. Awanta. Amen. I just felt I was a part ANC. And she stopped the program. Hore. I was a Le rata kampole sarati. Ene rabi na stedi ya msa duma. Hanka mekone kwa yakana. Nereka upeila kama. He murena ti ipoko. Murena di poko ya hutwanela. Hey, di poko. Hey, Morena, ti. Morena, di poko, shiri we. Hey, 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 shiri. Ah, hey, Morena, ti poko. Hallelujah. Hey, Ogaranga Gra Chansi in one memorial service. Katagato Ope Lanchi. Katobola Coloro. Kaopela Minister. Come with me in the book of Samuel. Chapter number 20. I'm reading verse number 18. Reverie Tuakamu Reverie Tamai. The first book of Samuel, chapter 20. Verse number 18 reads as follows. Then Jonathan said to him, 
Tomorrow is a new moon and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. Then Jonathan said to him, tomorrow is a new moon and you will be missed because your seat will be empty. I want to, to speak to the family and to the department and to South Africa. Hore, we have lost a giant. And tomorrow, when the president calls a meeting, whether be it in cabinet or in the NEC or wherever, the seat of Etna Molewa will be empty. Honalibato Ba Bartendan Stadium Sako Nelson Mandela Stadium. They are the people Baba Feivan Klapa Erotun Kichipa United. It's a song that they always sing Hebali in the stadium. Bari Aspelelang. And I want to say to South Africa today, Aspelelang. Ushoti Etna. Aspelelang. From where we are reading, it is a story of a man called David. And I know you know about this man called David. But I want to tell you a few things about this man. One thing about David is, is that David was a worshiper. When he came into the house, of the king called Saul, his main purpose was to come and worship. And the Bible teaches us that there was an instrument that David was playing. And there was this spirit that would come upon Saul. And every time when Saul was covered by this spirit, David would worship to an extent that the spirit will move away. So David was a worshiper. Over and above being a worshiper, David was a shepherd. He looked after the sheep of his father. Every time when you look at David, he is found behind the sheep. So he was not just an ordinary man. But he was a shepherd. He defended the sheep of his father. He fought. He killed a bear and he killed a lion. Defending the sheep of his father. But as a worshiper... And as a shepherd, David was a sinner. We are told that one day, David took a woman called Bathsheba and he slept with her. So much as David was used by God, much as David fought for the sheep of his father, he was also a sinner. Just like me, just like you, we are not perfect. And there's no perfect person in this world and in this world. But what I want to talk about this afternoon as we live here is that David was a warrior. He fought a bear and he fought a lion in his secret places. When David was fighting a lion, 
no one was there to see him. When David was fight, fighting a bear, no one was there to witness that. But one day the Bible says, David went to his brothers. And when he got to his brothers, when they were fighting where they were, there was a man called Goliath who was despising the God of Israel. And David said, I can fight this man. And when they said to him, can you really fight this man? He asked a question. What can be given to a man who will defeat this man? In other words, David was saying, when I was fighting my battles, when I was fighting a lion and a bear, I was fighting in the secret places. But now that I'm fighting in the public, and this is not my battle, something must be given to me. Now, with all these things, the Bible teaches us that the man called Saul started to hate David. He hated him with a passion until his son called Jonathan saw that there's something wrong. And where we are reading today, it's where David is talking to Jonathan and he's saying, your father hates me. Your father is behind me. Your father wants to kill me. Because I can tell you, you can never be loved by all the people. There's always someone who is behind you to pull you down. There's always someone who is behind you, who has got a bad motive behind you. Now, in this conversation, Jonathan is saying to David, now what can I, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? Now, David is answering this man, Uri, you can, you can take me away and watch the behavior of your father. And he is saying here, tomorrow, in other words, if we were using the, word, the, 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 the language of today, you will say tomorrow is a cabinet meeting. Tomorrow the president is calling us. Your father is calling us to come and sit. But do me a favor. I won't be there on my seat. It is a new moon. And my seat will be empty. I came to tell you today, my friends, we had a giant amongst us. We had a loving mother amongst us. We had a beautiful lady amongst us. You know, she would stand and speak with the presence. And she was a beautiful woman. And tomorrow, she won't be there on her seat. Somebody say amen. Somebody will come, but I'm, re but, but I'm replace her. I don't know whether it's about Ketilo or Mongo or Bataketa, but Riley Oyena. Oh my goodness. We were lucky, Bazalwani, to share a space with this beautiful woman. We were lucky. We were lucky. We were, you know. When, when, when my wife passed on, 2014, amongst many things that people were asking me, I don't know whether it's because I don't to all of us who spoke here, 
I want to say to all of us who shared in this space, let us celebrate Let us celebrate where she spoke amongst us. I remember just the other day, somebody called department thing. Amongst the things that she was talking, Kihore Meona Otsa Mailing, we the Korean Babuki. And when the phone came, Horasa Tolali thing, I said, Really, this must be a terrible joke. But I came to say to you today, Banabako Haye, Mewalona, Inesim Mewalona fail. Mewalona, Inele Me was a chaba. Auswalona, Inese Auswalona fail. Auswalona, Inele Ausi was a chaba. There is a lady in my church who connected me with her. Libitola Hae, Ke Ausin Shady. As I speak, she's on her way coming back from New York. She's coming. Una Tanza Tamaye for eight, three, for three weeks. But she's coming back. And I will always wonder, Hormara, Ausin Shady, why? Lena Lisa Kutsi because Lipila Libereka. And she said to me, It's because I worked with Minister Molewa and Ahona Nako Yarukuta Rokuta Gulibi I want to say to you today, Mudimu Ale Fudisi, Mudimu Ale Apesi. I was reading something just the other day. I read a story. And this story goes, Hori, there was this man who was a man of God. This man saved the nation. This man, he, he gave all. He was a minister of religion. He was there for the poor and for the widow. And the man, just like all of us, he died. And after he died, the family was crying. Until Abolokwa, the family was crying. A week later, the family was crying. Two weeks later, three weeks later, to be comforted. Check one, two. People trying to comfort the family, but the family ill every day. And then one day, it says, the wife was sleeping and she had a dream. And he had, in her dream, she saw men and women who have gone we have passed all of them she looked at their faces are people who are dead and they were going up the mountain with candles that were on but amongst these people the wife saw the husband and the husband was also carrying the candle but the candle Yahaye in Etimili. And because Kendall in Etimili, this man was falling. And Batubamu Namela, Bafita, Mudimahai, Bamahata, come out. And in her dream, the wife asked God and said, Father, this man worked so hard. This man was a man of God. This man saved the nation. Why is he battling? 
Why is his candle not like the candles of others? Why are they stepping on him? And God said to him, to her, the problem is you guys are crying. And you are crying too much. And when you cry, so she can, he cannot move. He has done what he was supposed to do on earth. And now he's gone. Some people say it's not about how long you live on earth. They say it's about how, what you do when you live on earth. Bapile, bapile, bapile. Uba kense mo society ngubo bante. Basa tamai. Bapile. Marhauri kia hopula hori. In their lives by edite in. You can't even write two pages. Yaseba si edite in. But some people, they come, they impact our lives, and they go. That's why I like Mansuana angwa long kuma biting aring rest in peace. Akia rate hang wetu in full, but kia rata hang wetu in abbreviation. Har R I P. Because in that case, Abulela Leruna Babuti. For those Baba Rekile, Belagabu Minister, are rest in peace. And for those Barro Balanka 6. Batsura ka 7. Yaka usa anor ka 9. Are return. If possible. And try again. May God heal you family. May God empower you. May you celebrate this life. And may you know. How tama ya kaitidi akahori. Wena, wanzele tuele, bye bye.